Hey guys, Josh with Metal in Motion. Welcome back. Today we're working again on another Husqvarna. Why do we work on so many Husqvarnas? I have no idea. Anyways, this complaint is the blade shut off when he was mowing and they wouldn't come back on. Uh, no matter how many times he tried pulling the, the switch, if he had his brake pedal on, whatever it was, no combination would get the uh, blades to turn back on. So I'm going to walk you through my process, kind of how my brain works when I go about diagnosing why the electric PTO. Yes, this is electric PTO, not manual uh, blades. So what my thought process is of uh, diagnosing it. So let's get started. All right, so for simplicity's sake, I have uh, taken the hood off so you guys can kind of get a better view. And I've pulled the switches out and just put them in the back. This is just so we can, uh, you can see what we're doing mostly. If you were to turn the key on, just turn it on, here's off, turn it on. If you pull the PTO switch, you should hear the clicking underneath. In fact, let me just switch this. Uh, well, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I want you guys to see the process. If you were to pull this, um, you should hear the PTO clicking underneath, and it's not. So the question is, do we have power getting to the PTO? The easiest way to do that would be to come down here, find the, PTO harness. If you look right here, it's really kind of dark right there. There is the wire right there that goes down into the frame and that goes underneath to the electric PTO. So if you follow that back up, it's this long straggly wire, two green wires, and we've got a red and a black coming in. So pretty much just positive battery voltage coming in and a ground. So if we disconnect this, one-handed here. We're gonna turn the key on, pull the PTO switch, put our test leads for our multimeter in here. We're checking for DC voltage. Put it in here and see if we have 12 volts. So let's do that right now. Let's see if we can get you guys in the meter times out. So we're set to DC volts. And hopefully you can see that right there. And I'm just gonna go, so we got PTO on. Key switch is turned on and we're going black into the black terminal. And one thing to be a note is don't cram your multimeter leads into the terminals. If you can back probe it, that's even safer. That way it doesn't like splay open the, the little contacts and you get a bad connection down the road. So as you can see, if you can see, we don't have any voltage. So just to be sure that we don't have a ground problem, let's take our black wire out and we'll just run this up to battery negative just to make sure we didn't lose a ground and we have zero again all right so we are not getting any power down to the electric clutch so the question is are we getting power to the key switch so let me get a schematic for you guys and you guys can kind of get an idea of how this works all right guys this is going to be really hard to see i hope you guys can see this so <laughs> essentially this thing I just I couldn't get it any darker this is the battery up here battery positive is this black line I know I don't have a red pen goes to the solenoid this little square is the solenoid it goes to the post solenoid comes through a fuse comes through an optional amp meter comes down to the B terminal on the key switch you guys see that any better? That's a sloppy drawing, but that's the route it takes. From the battery, goes to the solenoid, through the fuse, through optional, and to the B terminal on the key switch. So what I wanna do, I wanna go and make sure that we've got battery voltage to the key switch. Now there's an easier way to check if we have battery voltage to the key switch, and that is just crank the machine. If you crank the machine and it tries to start or crank over, you've got battery voltage to it. So do we have battery voltage? at the B terminal. Let's check that out. All right, so the easiest way, we could just crank it with the brake pressed down. You have to have the brake pressed down, obviously, and we do not. Okay, so with the brake pressed down, do we have voltage? <laughs> no, PTO switch is on. There we go. So we know we've got battery voltage to it, but for the sake of it, let's just test it and see. We're gonna go DC volts. Hopefully you guys can see that. DC volts, we're gonna go negative of the battery. There is a ground circuit on the back of the switch. It's gonna be the G terminal. You can test with uh, that 
G terminal using it as your ground. So we can back probe the G, that just goes back to the negative of the battery. And then we can just go to B. So if you look on the back of the switches, they've got labels, uh, B, A2, A1, accessory one, accessory two, L for lights, S for solenoid, M for magneto. We're gonna go to the B terminal. That's where it comes in to, from the battery to the solenoid on this little red wire right here. Get my hands out of the way. This little red wire goes up to the key switch and feeds the mower with 12 volts. And if you look there, we've actually, we're not getting anything right now, get it on there. There we go, 12.8, 12.27, so we're a little bit low. 12.27 volts. All right, the question is, are we getting through the key switch? Now, this comes out through the key switch, usually on a, let's go back to the schematic and see. All right, this comes out of the key switch on, here's A1 right here, guys. A1 comes all the way down and feeds optional hour meter, comes down to the fuel shutoff, which is on the bottom of the carburetor, comes down to the light switch. So this is all kind of accessory stuff, but the PTO on this one comes off of that A1 and goes, it actually shows it on, this is not the correct schematic. I meant to tell you guys that, but this is very close and this will work for what we're doing. Essentially, it comes off of that A1 circuit and goes to the PTO switch, which is this dotted rectangle right here. In this case, A1 goes into the PTO switch. They're showing it going into the middle one. I can tell you that on this model, it goes in through this one here, which is not gonna make any difference. All right, the question is, are we getting voltage through the key switch? If you wanna see how to test a key switch, I'll put a link up above. All we need to know is A1, do we have the same voltage, 12.26 as battery voltage there? If we have battery voltage here, then we need to go to the PTO switch where that wire comes into. We're gonna check for battery voltage there. We're gonna turn the PTO switch and make sure we have battery voltage coming out. My guess is we're gonna lose, we've lost battery voltage somewhere along this line right here because we've checked here at the PTO and we're not getting anything. So we're backtracking and uh, seeing where we lost our voltage. So let's get back up here and see. So we're gonna go uh, battery ground. I'm gonna use the G terminal on the key switch. That also verifies that I have a good ground going back to, from the uh, key switch back to the ground. Uh, and we're gonna go to the A1 terminal, which is gonna be this top one right here. Here's A1, back probe it on there. And with the key in the run position, we have, get my meters on there, we have 12.28. So we know we're getting battery voltage out of the key switch. So the next thing is what color wire is coming out of A1? The schematic is so crummy it doesn't show, plus it's not quite the same. But we've got blue and red coming out of A1, and we have blue and red right here coming into the PTO switch. So my guess is that's gonna be the same wires. What you could do is disconnect the key switch so you don't have any power going to it, or turn it off, whatever you feel comfortable with doing with your meter. If we turn it off, we could go to continuity, which is the little horseshoe. I'm gonna do the one with the Wi-Fi signal on it so I have a beeping and we could back probe, back probe that terminal, which is the blue and the red wire, and back to probe the A2 terminal, and we have continuity. So we know that those wires are connected. So now, do we get voltage here, or have we had a, do we have a break in the line or have some bad connection? So, go back to voltage, DC, turn the key on, that should be supplying voltage all the way to the key switch. So I'm gonna take black and I'm gonna go on the negative and I'm gonna back probe the blue and the red where it comes into the PTO switch. We have 12.3 getting to the PTO switch. So now, turn the PTO switch on. We should have voltage coming out of the PTO switch. So let's go black multimeter lead on ground and I'm probing the red wire directly across, just directly underneath that blue and red wire. What do we have here, guys? Trying to hold all this for you guys. Does that look like to you? Nothing, nada. How have we managed to do another PTO video? 
All right, well, that pretty much explains it. Okay, so we're getting voltage to the PTO, but we're not getting anything out of the PTO. So the easiest thing from there, just like in our previous video or our other videos, take a jumper wire with some little terminals on it, disconnect the supposedly bad PTO switch, and we're just gonna jump across it and we're gonna listen to the clutch kick on underneath. Make sure my key is turned on. Oh, we're unplugged. Clutch is still unplugged from the previous test we did, guys. Plug your clutch back in. Crazy guy. All right, now let's do it. It's not very strong sounding. Sounds a little weak to me, but it is working. So, we have a bad PTO switch again. So all these other ones, these other contacts, we can check this real quick. Put it on ohms. I have another video, I'll put a link up above, of how to really check these. But in short, we're just going to go to this one and this one. This is the PTO side of it. We should hear beeping. And here is another PTO switch I've got laying around here somewhere. If we go in the same two little terminals, this is the one that runs the PTO on this model. We have beeping and then not. We turn it on, you should have continuity beeping when it's turned on. So if we were to actually put this one in there, it's on, off. You can hear the PTO engaging and disengaging. All right, so the only other thing that I wanna check is Sometimes the, P the PTO, uh, if it gets high resistance, not high resistance, if it shorts out and the resistance goes down, the amperage goes up and it can burn these, these PTO switches out. So what I wanna do is come down here to the PTO pigtail, which is right here. And I wanna check the ohms on this clutch to make sure the ohms is still within spec. So I'm gonna turn the beeping off. I'm just gonna put my multimeter leads in here, let's see what we got. All right, 3.3, 3.4. Okay, so this is an Agura clutch. And the manual for this one says that if anything between three to four ohms is uh, good. So the clutch is technically within spec, nothing is shorted out um, from what I can see. I mean, if you really wanted, I know the PTO works on this because we've I've substituted that other PTO switch, but we could go here to ground and we have no continuity and we could go to the next terminal to ground and we have no continuity. So we know we're not shorting to ground on either one of these leads. So I'm calling the clutch good. I'm calling the switch bad. Plug our PTO back up. We'll um, get a new PTO switch, get this thing put in he'll be good to go. So anyways, guys, that's how I go about testing um, why the PTO doesn't kick on. I've just chased the voltage through the key switch over to the PTO switch and found that the PTO switch is toast. So anyways, I uh, hope that helps somebody. And if there's any tips or tricks or anything I forgot, leave it in the comments below. I'm Josh with Metal Emotion. We'll catch you guys next time.